Forklifts are used in a variety of different settings. They can be used to move, raise and lower large objects, pallets, crates, or other containers. As with any equipment or tool though, there are many possible hazards associated with their use. Exceeding the capacity of the forklift presents serious hazards, such as tip overs, falling loads, loss of steering control, collision, and being struck by a falling load. A forklift's capacity is the manufacturer's guideline for how much weight the forklift can safely lift. The stated capacity of a forklift only applies to the load center indicated on the data plate. If the load is not centered at the specified position, the forklift's capacity will be reduced. Loads come in all shapes and sizes, not just symmetrical boxes. An example is standard pipe or unstacked lumber that is not tied together. The load size, position, and weight distribution critically affect the forklift's capacity and the stability of the truck. This training program will look at the following areas dealing with load handling. Definitions, data plate, weight, size, and position, safe load capacity, maximum load moment, balance, stability, and recommended operations. Center of gravity is the point on an object at which all of the object's weight is concentrated. For symmetrical loads, the center of gravity is at the middle of the load. Fulcrum is the forklift's axis of rotation when it tips over. Lateral stability is a forklift's resistance to overturning sideways. Line of action is an imaginary vertical line through an object's center of gravity. Load center is the horizontal distance from the load's edge to the line of action through the load center of gravity. Longitudinal stability is the forklift's resistance to overturning forward or rearward. Moment is the product of the object's weight times the distance from a fixed point, usually the fulcrum. With forklifts, the distance is measured from the point at which the forklift will tip over to the object's line of action. The distance is always measured perpendicular to the line of action. The load moment is equal to the weight times distance. Track is the distance between the wheels on the same axle of the truck. The wheelbase is the distance between the center line of the vehicle's front and rear wheels. Every forklift must have a data plate, which provides important information for the operator or anyone loading the forklift. Operators must know where to find the data plate and be able to read and understand the information it contains, including the following. Truck model and serial number. Type of fuel used. Forklift weight. Capacity. Operators should always check the data plate for maximum capacity and maximum height before operating the forklift. Remember, the capacity should never be exceeded. The load weight, weight distribution, size, shape, and position are key factors affecting capacity and the stability of every forklift. Forklifts are designed to carry a capacity load at a standard load center, commonly 24 inches. The forklift's capacity is determined as if the load were a cube whose weight is evenly distributed and which is resting on the standard pallet having dimensions of 48 inches by 48 inches. With such a load, the horizontal distance from the center of the load to the vertical part of the forks would be 24 inches. Most loads are not perfectly shaped cubes having their center of gravity exactly in the middle of the cube. Capacity more than likely will be reduced with irregularly shaped loads, unbalanced weight distribution, or if the load is not centered on the forks. The addition of attachments to the forklift generally lowers the capacity of the forklift. 
Attachments such as drum grabs significantly reduce a forklift's capacity. When dealing with oversized loads, you must estimate the safe load capacity. If the load center is exceeded, you have to compensate by reducing the weight of the load. Operators should follow manufacturer's instructions regarding load capacity. If manufacturer's instructions are not available, use field calculations to estimate the reduced lifting capability. This method will not provide exact load reduction figures and should only be used as a guide. To estimate the reduced lifting capacity, you divide the load center of the forklift by the actual center of the load, then multiply the result by the load capacity of the forklift. This will provide you with a reasonable estimate of the safe load capacity. For example, assume a forklift has a 5,000 pound capacity with a 24 inch load center. The load has a center of 36 inches from the front face of the forks. Since the load center exceeds the standard distance of 24 inches on which the 5,000 pound capacity is based, the actual safe load capacity is less than 5,000 pounds. Divide 24 inches by 36 inches times 5,000 pounds to get the new approximate load capacity, which is 3,333 pounds. Load moment, as stated earlier, is the product of the object's weight times the distance from a fixed point, usually the fulcrum. The way in which weight is distributed changes the amount of weight the forklift can safely carry. This can be seen in the following experiment. An object that weighs approximately 5 to 10 pounds is lifted. This is the same as a forklift lifting an object. The object is extended straight out away from the body. As it is, the center of the object's weight moves farther from the body, causing the object to feel heavier and causing a fall forward. The same principle, increasing the load center distance, can cause a forklift to tip over. When the load center distance increases, it is actually increasing something called the load moment. Whether an object is stable depends on the object's moment at one end of a system being greater than, equal to, or smaller than the object's moment at the system's other end. This principle can be seen in the way a teeter-totter works. If the product of the load and distance from the fulcrum, that is the moment, is equal to the moment at the device's other end, the device is balanced and it will not move. However, if there is greater moment at one end of the device, the device will try to move downward at the end with a greater moment. Since the overturning force depends on both the weight of the load and the load's distance from the pivot point, a forklift's capacity is always stated in terms of both, the load's weight and its load center distance. For example, if a forklift has a 3,000 pound capacity with a 24 inch load center, the maximum allowable load moment is 72,000 inch pounds, which is 3,000 times 24 inches. If the load center distance of a load is greater than the 24 inches, the only way to keep the load moment from exceeding the 72,000 inch pounds is to reduce the load. The easiest way to determine the maximum load when the load center distance is greater than the stated distance of the nameplate is to divide the maximum load moment by the actual load center distance. If a load is 60 inches long with a 30 inch load center, then the maximum that the load can weigh is 2,400 pounds. We determine that by dividing the load moment of 72,000 inch pounds by the 30 inch load center, which equals 2,400 pounds. You can calculate a maximum allowable load moment to determine whether an unusual load, such as one longer than 48 inches, having a load center distance greater than 24 inches, or one that has an off center of gravity can be handled safely. Minimizing the load center distance measured from the back of the forks to the center of the load allows the forklift to carry more weight. 
a forklift with a 4,500 pound capacity at a 24 inch load center will tip over if a 60 inch load is positioned lengthwise. Positioning the load in this way increases the load center distance to 30 inches and increases the load moment by 27,000 inch pounds. The forklift safely carries a 4,500 pound load at a load center distance of 24 inches, but tips over when the load center increases to 30 inches. Here is the calculation. 24 inches times 4,500 pounds equals 108,000 inch pounds. 30 inches times 4,500 pounds equals 135,000 inch pounds. The load moment is increased by 27,000 inch pounds. If the load center distance is 30 inches, the only way to keep the maximum allowable load moment within 108,000 inch pounds is to limit the weight of the load to 3,600 pounds or 108,000 inch pounds by 30 inches equals 3,600 pounds. It is important to understand why forklifts can tip over and loads become unstable and fall. Factors that affect a forklift's balance are the center of gravity and shifting center of gravity. Let's look at center of gravity first. Weight should be distributed evenly when carrying irregular loads. Keep the center of gravity of the load as near as possible to the center going horizontally across the forks and keep the center of gravity of the load as near to the front wheels as possible. Now, let's look at shifting center of gravity. All objects have a specific center of gravity, which is the point on an object at which all of the object's weight is concentrated and all of the parts balance each other. Since the capacity of the forklift is based on the assumption of a cube having the center of gravity in the middle, the shape and position of the actual load are key factors when determining whether a load can be carried safely. When a load is placed on a forklift, the key concept is the combined center of gravity of the forklift and the load. When the load is placed on the forklift, the combined center of gravity of the forklift and the load will move forward but the forklift will not tip over so long as the weight of the load is centered and does not exceed the capacity stated on the data plate. But if the load is too heavy, or if it is placed at the end of the forks so that the load center distance is increased, the excessive load moment will cause the forklift to tip over. Remember, when the forklift engages a load, the combined center of gravity of both the load and the truck system shifts forward from the center of gravity of the unloaded forklift. Do not operate a forklift if the back wheels start to lift off the ground. This indicates the forklift is overloaded and the center of gravity has shifted too far forward. Remember while operating, handle only stable or safely arranged loads. Always keep the center of the load as low to the ground as possible. Safely tilt the mast back and position the heaviest part of the load against the carriage. And while traveling, do so with the mast tilted back to stabilize the load. Almost all counterbalanced powered industrial trucks use a three-point suspension system meaning that the forklift is supported at three points. This is true even if the forklift has four wheels. The truck's steer axle is attached to the truck by a pivot pin in the axle center. When this point is connected to the front wheels with imaginary lines, this three-point support forms a triangle called the stability triangle. Triangle ABC, where point A is the pivot point in the rear axle, and points B and C are the front wheels. The center of gravity for the forklift is changed by the load and by momentum. The forklift will tip over if either of these factors forces the center of gravity outside the stability triangle. 
When the forklift is not loaded, the location of the forklift's center of gravity is the only factor to be considered in determining its stability. Forklifts can tip over without a load. The center of gravity of an unloaded truck is between the axle of the steer wheels at A and the drive wheels at B and C, and it is marked with an arrow as the vehicle center of gravity. When forklifts are moving without a load, the center of gravity is near the rear of the vehicle and very close to the side of the stability triangle. At this point, any quick turn or even an unstable driving surface could cause the forklift to tip over. The combined center of gravity of the forklift and its maximum load shifts forward toward the load so that it is now located on the very line representing the front axle and at the very edge of the stability triangle. While the loaded forklift is still theoretically stable, in practice, the combined center of gravity should never reach this line because sudden stops, starts, and turns could shift the center of gravity further out and destabilize the forklift. A shift of the center of gravity can occur as the forklift is loaded. The forklift is more stable when it is properly loaded than when it is unloaded. However, improper loading, such as loading the forklift beyond its capacity, or loading an oversize or wide load without adjusting the weight, will cause the forklift to tip over, either laterally on its side or longitudinally forward. The direction of the tip over will depend on where the combined center of gravity shifts outside the stability triangle. Another aspect of the stability triangle is the vertical stability known as the line of action. This is a vertical line that runs through the forklift's center of gravity. If the line of action shifts outside the stability triangle, the forklift will tip over. The placement of the load on the forks, how high the load is raised, the angle of the floor underneath the forklift, and momentum are all factors in keeping the line of action within the stability triangle. Do not exceed the stated capacity shown on the forklift's data plate and know the forklift's mechanical limits. If the load is oversized, irregularly shaped, or loaded incorrectly, the actual load center distance could exceed the stated load center distance, causing the forklift's capacity to be exceeded. Always load as close to the front wheels as possible to minimize the load center distance. Load the heaviest part of the load toward the mast. Position the load in such a way that it will shorten the load center distance. Always maintain control of the vehicle. Use extra caution and drive slower than normal when handling extra heavy loads that may approach the forklift's maximum capacity. The load should be carried at the lowest position possible. Accelerate slowly and evenly. And always be cautious when tilting the forks forward. If your forklift begins to tip, do not jump. By jumping, you could be crushed beneath the forklift or load. Brace yourself, holding onto the steering wheel and pull yourself tightly up to it. Finally, keep all parts of your body inside the operator area. Knowing the forklift, its capacity, and where to find the information is vital to safe operation. If you are not sure about a load and its stability, do not pick up the load. Never transfer a load that you are not sure of its weight. And finally, never exceed the capacity of a forklift. <laughs>